Yeah, I think the idea has a lot of promise, and it sounds pretty fun. Yeah, I'll do like a YouTube series. I don't think editing will take that long. It has been almost a month and a half, and I haven't started episode one. I've decided to cut myself off. No more playing on the account till I make a video. That's a promise. When I look at an area-restricted account, I like to see three things. Clear guidelines, limited use of one-time exceptions, and most importantly, interesting and evolving gameplay. I'm restricted to the north, and that's very vague, so let's define that. Fortunately for us, there's a large horizontal barrier that's decently far north, the Wilderness Ditch. So let's just extend that out a bit. By utilizing some dead content, we can determine the latitude. Standing one tile north of the ditch, the latitude is 11 degrees 18 minutes, and one tile south of the ditch reads 11 degrees 13 minutes. A quick trip to Mauritania tells us the latitude of the ditch itself is 11 degrees 16 minutes and 11 degrees 15 minutes, and we have successfully discovered why everyone just googles their coordinate steps. Now that we've established 11 degrees 16 minutes as the boundary to the area, let's see what we have available to us. The Wilderness, the Fremenic Province, Berthorpe, the Piscatoras Hunter area, and a sliver of Northern Mauritania are what we have to work with. However, I will not travel south of 11 degrees 16 minutes in order to access the other sections of my area. As a side note, Zaya is almost entirely above this boundary. Talking to Veos in Port Sarum would unarguably be the smallest exception to grant me the most content, but I don't want to. Exceptions on this account will be made to unlock large amounts of content, mostly through quests. Immediately after Tutorial Island, I gathered the various meats for Druidic Ritual as well as completed the Bar Crawl. I plan on completing Priest and Peril to fully unlock my area once I have a way to teleport directly into Mauritania. Other quests I plan to do include most of the main Fremenic questline, of which the Fremenic Trials contains a small exception and Lunar Diplomacy contains a large one. I don't currently plan on completing the Fremenic Exiles. The quest itself is entirely inbounds, however its Requirement Heroes quest would be the largest exception by far. This would also unlock Throne of Miscellanea and its sequel Royal Trouble, so I'm keeping it open as an unlikely possibility later on. Finally, once I get 40 magic, I will get a house and move it to Relica. This area has a ton of content in it. A couple of bosses, some bizarre roadblocks, more bosses, a few ridiculous grinds, a big boss at the end. I can honestly talk for hours about it, but I can't wait any longer to- Welcome to the North. Like I just said, I am really excited to begin this account. I did do a fair bit of research beforehand, enough to make sure my limitations are functional, but not so much as to spoil my route for myself before I actually begin. So yeah, I'm starting my journey here outside Barbarian Assault. Right now, I only have access to the Fremenic Province in Berthorpe, but as I reach certain milestones, I'll be able to naturally expand my area to the wilderness and a few other places. Of the items I started with, the only three I kept were the axe, the tinderbox, and net. I wasn't sure what was considered proper form when it comes to items you get from Tutorial Island, but they don't affect me too much and I end up dropping them pretty early on anyways. Apart from that, I did accidentally get level 2 range while killing the bear for Juridic Ritual. It happened, I'm not happy about it, but it's okay. The first major goal for myself is completing the Fremenic Trials. This quest unlocks Relica as a strong base of operations for this account, so the sooner I complete it, the better. But before I complete the quest, I have to start it, and to start it, I have to get there alive. So right now, I'm gonna catch some shrimp. Before I forget, I need to click through this dialogue with Captain Kane to unlock the Barbarian Assault minigame teleport, which I need if I die. This was the main reason I needed to start here. My rule for death on this account is that I have to teleport back into my area, which is mainly so that I can't purposely die and give myself a free walk to a place I haven't been. Oh, I was not paying attention there. I guess I'm doing push-ups. Okay, skip the training, get roasted, make sure we have the teleport, and there we go. One more shrimp brings me to 5 fishing and 13 food for my first major hurdle on this account, rocks. I don't know the exact odds of making this jump, but I did use Aberrant Spectres to lower my main's agility to 1, and it took me about 15 tries. 
So I'm hoping I can make it with this half inventory of food. Oh, I made it. That was anticlimactic. Play the victory music, I guess. <coughs> While I'm here, I'm gonna train a bit of agility. This is about two to two and a half KXP an hour, and it's my only method until level 30. Hey look, my first random in Varrock. Man, I wish it went that fast, but there's 10 agility. Here we are in Relica. This will hopefully be my home for a majority of the series. I suppose there's no reason not to start the quest right away. The Fremenic Trials is a quest where you have to persuade a majority of the 12 Relica council members to vote for you to become a member of their tribe. Five of them will never let you in, so it's up to you to convince the remaining seven. The first council member we seek approval from is Swenson, the navigator. He's constructed a maze underneath his house for us to traverse, and if we can do it, he'll give us his vote. What a pushover. I hope they're all that easy. Olaf the Bard's Trial requires me to perform a song on a lyre enchanted by a spirit named Fossigrimen. Now Fossi is very particular about this enchantment, and he needs a raw shark in order to enchant my lyre. This brings us to our first major roadblock. My original plan was to buy a harpoon at the fishing stall and trade my fishing to 76, but nobody here will talk to me. The fishmonger, the merchant, even this random fisherman on a dock- oh, he's a council member, that's neat. None of them will give me the time of day. Drop tables don't help me here either. The Dagonauts that carry harpoons can only be found in the lighthouse, and I can't get the items required for Horror from the Deep until much later on. The raw shark is essential for completing the trials, and there are still two possible ways for me to obtain one, but that will be the focus of next video. For now, let's do something else. One thing I definitely need for this quest is combat stats, and let me say, rock crabs are a godsend. At 50 HP each, these will be a phenomenal training method for a very long time. A very, very long time. Done with our first trip, and we get two seaweed. Time to get some more shrimp and go for another. As slow and as boring as these are, it is pretty nice to get multiple levels from a single kill. And it drops nothing. Alright, forget this. Chickens! A classic RuneScape monster. They drop bones for prayer XP and meat for cooking. This is more my speed. I think this is the best way to do this. I can kill chickens instead of catching shrimp, so I still gain some combat XP when I'm getting food, and once I have a full inventory, I can kill a crab or two. Oh, and I just realized there's an iron pickaxe spawn up here, which is currently my best in slot weapon. Our third rock crab kill? Uh, I'm rich. This is what I was looking for. I mean, not for gold specifically, but just some coins in general. And I know just where to spend it. I thought I'd try to sneak some mining in, but this gate will not talk to me. Another pickaxe. Wait, these things have a high elk value of 84 gold. I have killed four crabs for a total of four gold. So not only are iron pickaxes my best in slot weapon, they're also my best money maker. Ow, that was a five. With an incredible source of income, I now needed some place to spend it. Relica wouldn't do, so I went off to Keldegrim in search of somebody who would talk to me. And after almost getting scammed for half my cash stack, I found the correct boat and was on my way. This cutscene is like a relic of the mid-2000s. It's so wall of texty, the scrolling's really slow. Uh, this footage is at two times speed, by the way. And I really question the choice of music. I just feel like it could be a little more, um... Brrr. Jagex, I have a degree in game design, please hire me. But more importantly than any of that, let's talk about this music. Not the Star Wars theme, this music. The song that's playing right now is called Sailing Journey 2, and yes, it sounds like a discount sea shanty too. It isn't found in the in-game music player, and it's only played once during this sequence in the giant dwarf. Of course, this is not to be confused with Sailing Theme 2, which is played during Dragon Slayer and is the exact same song. I guess what I'm asking is, why does this even exist? You have this iconic song that everyone holds dear to them, and you put this thing in your quest? What kind of garbage developer would you- And that's when I was arrested. Fortunately, the dwarves didn't seem to mind that I had destroyed the monument to their beloved king, but they did ask me to build them another statue, to which I responded, uh, 
let's just see. Hmm. Ah, uh, third go. Nope. Keldegrim is great. It has a general store, a crossbow shop, a crafting stall. I'm getting arrested again. Oh God, where am I? Nobody look. Close your eyes. I'm rich. Where was I? Oh, right. A pickaxe store? Wait, they don't buy or sell iron pickaxes? <laughs> I guess I'm selling them to the general store then. <laughs> Down here, I can finally use this iron pick for its intended purpose. Here's level 5 mining. And at the furnace, I'll... Is this the furnace? Where's the furnace? Oh no, the icon is for the blast furnace. Is that a range? What? 2,500 gold. I'm not that rich. Man, not even these anvils will talk to me. That's a shame. I guess I'll sell this to the store. This is a really interesting general store. Vials, torches, a pestle and mortar. But for now, let's grab some gloves, a tinder box, and a bucket. Yeah. I don't know how I missed this store the first time around, but the weapon shop here has everything I'll ever need for a really long time. And this dwarf sells kebabs for one gold? That's a steal. I'm gonna get some revenge on these dwarves for not letting me smith. Yeah, on second thought, maybe I'm not strong enough for this yet. Let's go back to the crabs, okay? Not even the sand will talk to me. These people seem like they're having fun. First little training session is done, and it looks like it completed an easy task in there as well. Ah, the spoils of war. No? Ah, the spoils of standing next to an infinite supply of iron pickaxes. Now I can buy my first real weapon, the steel scimitar. Oh, that's great. That's an additional plus 10 accuracy and plus 7 strength. Which is great, because it's gonna have to get me all the way to the adamant sword. We now have 30 attack, but more importantly, look at these pickaxes. And there's a genie lamp in there too. I wonder what I'm gonna use it on. Seriously, I don't remember what I used it on. Still a little short on gold for the Addy Sword. There we go. Adamant Sword has been acquired. Look at these bonuses. Now we're getting somewhere. Next episode, we start bossing.